Emmy Cleves, 45 years of Bikram Yoga teacher. I'm welcoming you to a wonderful healing yoga class. To get the maximum therapeutic results from the class, you need to practice it in a warm environment, ideally 105 degrees. If you don't have a sauna available, use space heaters. Bikram Yoga's first studio in Beverly Hills, we had space heaters all over the room and people fought for a place in front of it. So anyway, uh, the heat uh, makes you more flexible for one thing, but uh, more importantly, it generates heat shock molecules. These molecules are anti-aging. They create a relaxation response as well as they protect and repair any damaged proteins that exists in the body. Whenever your body, internally or externally, generates a fever, the fever helps the immune system fight uh, pathogen-associated uh, molecular patterns. That includes the coronavirus virus-19. It's sad that the yoga the hot yoga studios are closed and you do have to practice alone without the teacher's eyes on you because the teacher is there to enforce precision and intensity. I hope that it will soon change. Enjoy the class. Okay, feet together, fingers interlaced, put the knuckles against the chin and are we all here? Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Inhale, push the chin into your fingers so they stretch and bring the elbows as close to the ears as you're possible, you can. Exhale, drop your shoulders, look at the ceiling, bring your elbows forward till they're parallel and touch in front of you. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, hold it. And exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, and touch it. Inhale, push the chin into the knuckles, let the fingers stretch, pull the elbows higher, stomach in, hold it nice and firm. And exhale, drop your shoulders so that you feel the stretch in the upper back on top of your shoulder blades when you touch the elbows. Inhale. Full lungs, nice, slow, gradual, elastic stretching all the way up. And exhale, mouth open. Slide the fingers together in a double fist. Push it into the chin and resist a little with the chin. That will strengthen your neck muscles. Inhale. We want to get as much muscular involvement in the upper body as possible. Keep pulling the elbows up so all the ribs are stretching. And exhale, mouth open, all the old stale out, air out of the body, and touch the elbows. Inhale, chin down, elbows up. Pull up the kneecaps and make sure you pull in the abdomen. And exhale, mouth open, eyes open, and touch the elbows. Inhale. Slowly, elastically, there's continuous connection. And exhale, mouth open, slide the fingers, and touch it. Inhale, smoothly, evenly, and all the way up. Exhale, mouth open, relax it and touch it. Inhale, full lungs, stomach in, and exhale, stretch those elbows, keep them parallel, and touch them. Inhale, all the way, and exhale, 
Spine straight, don't pull the backward bend. Inhale, chin down, and stretch, stretch, stretch. Abdomen pulled in, and exhale. Make a double fist. <clears throat> Inhale. Pull up the kneecaps. Pull in the abdomen. Hold it. And exhale. Massage your fingers. Inhale. All the way up. And exhale. Touch it. Inhale. Full lungs. And exhale. Touch it. Inhale. And exhale. Okay. Shake out your hands, moisten your mouth, and second set. Let's do it nice and e easy and do it continuously. Okay, I don't talk in between it. You know exactly know how the breathing is going and I'm just gonna count for you. Okay, interlace fingers into the chin and begin. One, two, three, four, five, six, hold this. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, and touch it. Inhale, coordinate the breath with the movement so that your lungs are full, the elbows are maximum up. And exhale. Your elbows touch when your lungs are empty. And touch it. Inhale. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold it. Exhale. One, two, three, four, five, six. And touch it. Inhale. Full lungs. Pull up more. Get work those elbows. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. And exhale, little by little, your elbows get closer to the ears. You have to stretch out a lot of your chest muscles. Inhale. Press the chin down more and keep pulling. Leverage that. Pull those elbows up. And exhale. And touch it. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, hold it. And exhale, one, two, three, four, five, and touch it. Inhale, all the way up to the elbows. Hold it there, hold it. And exhale, one, two, three, four, Five, six, and touch it. Inhale. Work everything. Squeeze your glutes too. And exhale. The more muscles you can mindfully mobilize, the better. Touch it. One more time. Make it a good one. Pull up. Stomach in. Glutes side. Elbows as high as they can get. And exhale. Touch it. Okay. Shake out your hands, moisten your mouth, and now we're ready for the half moon. Align your toes, arms overhead, and cross your fingers, release the index, and now work really hard. Number one, pull the chest up. Pull the chin up so it's a 90 degree angle to the chest. Pull the arms a little more back so they're by your ears or even a little behind it. 
Rock the body weight back into the heels, pull the abdomen in, tighten your glutes, and straight line, stretch your body to the right, pushing your hips to the left. It's not just bending, it is stretching. Oh, well, you still want to loosen up, my God, I forget all this back and forth. You look also ready. All right. <laughs> okay, come back to the center and get into the real business. Stretch up, chest up, chin up, head between the arms, and really try to bring the wrists closer together. And that chin, don't let that chin hang down. Everything in a straight line. And now we'll go to the right. Push the hips to the left. Maintain alignment between the hips and the shoulders. No gap between your head and your arms. Keep exhaling. Pushing the hips, pushing more. Use your glutes again. More of the buttocks. They are not just for sitting. They have to keep your body up in a good posture. So make them work and come up. Back to the center, stretch up. Again, create a straight line first. Pull the arms back more. By the ears or behind the ears. Pull the chest up, stomach in, and straight line to the left. Squeeze those glutes again and push the hips. It is the action of the bending should really initiate in the hips. The arms you know, just ultimately sink down more, but use the hips to push them more to deepen that curve in your spine. The big muscles, the heavy guns, the buttocks. And come up. Stretch up. Upward again, create length in your spine to the maximum. Through the chest and through the arms, drop your head back. All the way. Now drop your arms back and try to reach the back wall with the fingertips. Your glutes are tight and push forward. Use those big guns and push forward more. And stretch back more. Gene, you have to push the hips more and arms back more. But get the arms more back by your ears. The head is back and the heels are back more. Now try to get the arms to catch up with the ears. Little ex exhalations, that will be able to maintain the whatever long, long I happen to hold you. Nice, Jeff. And come up. And now just hinge forward. Keep your knees straight and touch the floor with your fingertips. And then grab your heels from behind. With a, making a, a lobster grip. Ideally, or you can hook the fingers under the heels. I don't like under the heels because that lengthens your legs. <laughs> uh, but grab it any way you can. And then up with the hips and touch your stomach and chest and ultimately the face on the legs. Do work in stages. Work the arms behind it and use that arm strength to tie the chest into the legs. And the head is the last thing. First, the stomach and the chest meets the legs. And then the final thing, when that's happened, the forehead touches. Nice, that's such a good, good. A little more elbows, Jeff. More arm, more arms. And inhale, come up. Try to come out the same way with straight legs, straight spine. And arms down. Couple of inhalations and exhalations just to get yourself back, back to neutral. And arms overhead again. Now the second set should be a little better. Stretch up. Pull the chest up, pull the abdomen and squeeze your glutes and line yourself up in a straight line. Chin away from your chest, weight on the heels and up and over to the right. Push the hips. Initiate the movement from the hips. Push it. Push it to the left while you just reach more with the arms and shoulders to the right. <clears throat> Don't forget to breathe. Little sips of air again. Your body needs oxygen. <clears throat> so definitely continue little inhalations. Come up, back to the center. Stretch up, create a straight line again. Stomach in. Tighten your glutes, weight on the heels, and up and over to the left. Let's use the hips again. Push the hips, push them.
remember the alignment? The shoulder and the hip should be exactly on the same parallel line. If you have a trouble with that, try to do it against the wall sometimes. Put your back in the wall and so that everything is touching even. And then the body will remember when you do it, free form. And come up. <clears throat> Stretch up, lengthen your spine again. Nice and long. And drop the head, squeeze the glutes, push them forward, and just drop back. Relax back. Get more of your weight behind you. The more the arms and the head and the shoulders are behind you, the more you're able to stretch backward. Because what you're doing, you're stretching all the frontal muscles. They are kind of lame muscles. As you sit on top of them all the time. They never have to do anything. Well, stretch them out at least now so that squeeze your glutes again and push a little more forward. Point the fingertips to the back wall and visualize them lengthening toward it. And come up. Pull the stomach in. Keep the, keep the arms in line with your head and just hinge from the hips. So keep everything straight. You can just tap the fingertips on the floor and keep your knees locked, but you can wiggle the hips right and left if you want to get a little more length than that. Just wiggle the hips right and left. And then grab your heels. Yes, like that. That's good, girls. Grab the heels from behind and get those elbows positioned on the calf muscles. Then use your arm strength to get the stomach and chest touch your legs. And keep the head hanging loose until at some point it's ready to touch. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a slowly acquired, very nice gene. A good front line is doing good. Doing good. Push the knees back, however. Don't cheat yourself. Push the knees in and pull up the kneecaps. To verify that you really have not locked the knees, pull up the kneecaps to keep yourself honest. Okay, come up. Arms down, couple of breaths. And that went well. Okay, let's do the awkward. Place your feet six inches parallel. Be precise. Arms in front, also six inches apart. Palms toward the floor, all fingers together. And don't just let them hang. Stretch them from the shoulders. Stab the air with them so that all the muscles are mobilized. And very slowly lower yourself into this imaginary chair. Watch the knees. If you can see the mirror, make sure the knees are over your toes. Little more knees apart. That's it. At the, point, at the time to, me, to make it right is at the time that you're sitting down. Once you're sitting down, it's harder to correct. Sit down to the chair. It's not a high chair, not a bar stool. Good, that's good. Sit there and get those arms activated and push up. Stand up on your tippy toes. Lift the heels till the feet are perpendicular to the floor and press them into the floor. Get the whole body as tall as you can get from the toes to the shoulders again. Shoulders and arms are strong and lower yourself to the halfway point so the knees and the hips are on the same level. Heels up more. Keep lifting the heels. Continuously work the heels. Stomach in. Concentration. Feel the shoulders that they really are working. They're participating. Get really mindfully connected to how your body is executing this posture. And then after a while, when you do something indirectly, you'll have the right form in your mind. And you'll be able to correct easily and push up. <laughs> <laughs> Lift your heels just a little bit. Enough to press your knees together. Press the knees and slowly descend all the way this time. Now keep lifting the heels. Heels are lifting up more. Come on, Jeff. Heels up, heels up. Go down all the way till you're almost touching the heels. Knees more down, chest more up, stomach in. Sit down a little more. Heels up, heels up, heels up. Don't keep them at half mast. 
all the way up and change. Arms down, couple of breath. Second set, plant your feet again. Six inches, parallel position, and that's how they're safe the entire time. Arms in front, again, stab the air with them. Stomach in, lower yourself to the chair. <clears throat> watch the knees, watch the knees, don't let them turn in. A little more. Be precise, especially when its knees are involved. You want to make sure that all the bones are properly aligned because the knees are very tricky. A little misalignment, some of the ligaments or something, and they complain and they give you grief. So precision and prevent those kind of things. Sit down a little more. Oh, some good ones. Okay. Stand up on your <laughs> stand up on your tippy toes. Lift your heels all the way. All the way maximum. Come on, heels up, heels up, heels up. Perpendicular. A little more. Oh no, you have to lift it. You you don't let me push you forward. I'm lifting the heel up. Yeah. Like that. Don't bunch your toes. See what happened? Your big toe was bunching. Spread the toes apart. And there'd be a bigger platform for the heels to come up. All the way. Yes, a little more. That's good. That's good. Spread the toes. Don't bunch them. Okay. Go down. Once you're up there, but you know, the problem is going down is almost impossible if you don't have it up. A little more up. Half masters, come on. Up with the heels. Go to the chair. Heels up. Don't let your heels turn in more either. You have to keep the heels the same distance as the toes. And come up. Third one. Lift your heels. Press the knees together. Stomach in. Lower yourself to the all the way to the heels without sagging into them. Push the knees more down, the chest more up, <clears throat> and keep working the arms. The arms are your balancing tool, so the more you stretch them and activate the muscles in them, the more solidly and secure you'll feel in the posture. Okay. Ready to push up. Okay. Eagle. Right arm under the left. Cross your elbows, cross your wrists, put your palms together, thumbs toward your face. Pull the elbows down till the fingertips line up with the tip of your nose. Now push your hips back, bend the knees and push, don't, let, don't go down with the elbows, keep the chest up more. Chest, elbows in and chest up, just push your hips back. But get the chest up. And the right leg over the left. You can twist to the left as much as you need to hook the big toe behind the left ankle. And then lower your hips a little more. But keep pulling the rib cage up and back a little more. No gap between the ankles. No light showing there. Concentrate. Remember, again, balancing posture. Make sure your eyes are focused on something. If it's about someone's head in front of you or the floor somewhere, but pick up your point of balancing for the eyes. Chest up more. Change. Swing the arms, left and to the right. Palms together, fingers even. No, not interlaced fingers. You have to teach the shoulders to keep you pull down. And then push your hips back, pull your stomach in, and left over the right. Twist as much to the right as you need to hook the big toe. That's the key. Chest up. Don't go down with the body like that. See, there is a lumbar curve here that you have to reestablish. Because when you spend a life sitting, this disappears. This posture digs it out again. 
So don't lean forward with the elbows in the chest. Keep pulling it up and away from the knees. And change. Second set. Right hand to the left. And push the hips back, pull the stomach in. And then once you push the hips back, pull the chest up. That will show the lumbar curve. And maintain it, don't lose it. Now right over the left. Hook the big toe, sit down then, and keep pulling the ribcage up, and don't forget to work the abdomen. A little more. You have to bring the leg closer to the groin. That right leg has to be way up so it gets pressure on the femoral artery because that is a major blood vessel that this posture stimulates so that from top to bottom you get fresh blood. And change. Left arm under the right. Fingers, you can interlace the fingers to match up them so that the tips of fingers match up, but then open up again. One say the fingers are the right way, and then pull down, and then chest up, and left over the right. Hook the big toe, sit down a little more, and work on your lumbar curve. It shouldn't be this straight as a board, it should be a little bit of a a curve there, right there where the buttocks start. Chest up a little more. And you achieve that by chest up and keeping the hips down. And change. Okay, shake out your hands. And the big one standing at the knee. Pick up your right foot. Interlace the fingers about two inches below the top of the toes. Midfoot, not the toes, not the heel, but right in the middle. Fingers interlaced, thumbs on top of the, if you need to. And lock the standing leg. That is absolute necessity. The posture does not happen again. Your balancing point in your eyes is totally glued to the eyes, glued to that. Your knee is locked, pull the kneecap up. And then very slowly, mindfully extend your right heel forward with the toes pointing toward your head. And keep pushing the hip a little more forward from the right till it's parallel. Now those of you who practiced a while and are comfortable with it, Work the elbows, bring it to the calf muscle. And uh, don't forget to keep the abdomen nice and firm. At this point, along with the eyes, the stomach has a great deal to do to give you stability. And then curl the head in and try to touch the forehead on the knee. That is a cherry on top of the sundae. Well, some of you built the Sunday, okay, but you know, the cherry didn't come. <laughs> okay, and then like, pick it up. Nice firm grip. Lock your standing knee, your eyes focused on your observation point, whatever that is, stomach in. Slowly extend the heel forward, toes pointing back. Now tighten the muscles in the upper leg so that it's as firm. The knee is as firm as a standing knee. Don't go to the next stage until you complete that because the muscles have to be conditioned in order to support you in the rest of the posture. So if the upper knee is just wobbly and soft and, and bent, you're never going to get the full control over the posture. So work on the first one, each stage at a time, and perfect it. So the upper leg is the first after the, I mean the next after the standing knee. Uh, elbows and forehead, if you get there. Good. 
Good, nice. There's a lot of cherries on the tea on the Sunday. <laughs> Second set. All right. Grab your foot. Okay. Kick forward. Lock the knee. Then make sure that your foot is evenly distributed. Don't allow your big toe lifting, Roxanne, that's important. The toes are distributed evenly and all four corners of your foot are evenly reaching on the floor, touching the floor. If you allow to, if you favor one side or the other, usually that is disaster in your future. <laughs> so may, maintain again mindful awareness of how your body is performing in the posture and which parts need adjustments. And change. Left leg. Pick it up. Nice firm grip on the toes. It's pulling. You have to pull on the foot. It can be just holding. Once you extend the leg forward, lock your standing knee. Extend the leg forward, lock the upper leg. Now start pulling on it. Pulling on that, don't turn it. Keep the heel and the toes. What do I see about this heel? Can I do a little bit this way? Okay, pull and then go with the elbows. Good. And touch your foot. Curl in, curl in. Choke your throat. I think, uh, let me, uh, some, yeah, I want to try something, pick up the foot again, extend the upper leg, and the way that you, now, when you get ready to go to the elbows, do your head and the elbows together, because you're, you know, choke, 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 choke. <laughs> And you, that's, and then that's where the arms are doing very, ooh, a lot of strength. You feel a lot of stretch through here. Try that way because that's, I think you'll be much more secure and you'll get the forehead right on the knee. Okay. Standing bow. We did two sets, right? Okay. Put your elbow against your hip bone with a palm in upward position. Lift your right leg up behind you and hook your hand under the foot and put it a little above the heel. Don't put it over the heel, more a midfoot. All five fingers in a really serious grip because again, the arms will be working very hard in this one. Left arm up, stand up straight, stretch the arm as much as you can, chin up a little bit so that your chin will ultimately be right on top of your shoulder. Knees are touching to square your hips. No light shining behind it. And then kick up. Kick up till you feel a stretch in your right arm. When that's happening, now you're ready to kick and at the same time, roll down, stretching that left arm forward like you're gonna touch the the mirror in front of you and kick the leg until you see it above your head. Good job, just like that, but go down a little more, but kicking continuously. Kicking more, kicking more, and stretch this arm more. Ultimately connect the two arms that both shoulders feel equally stretched. One by pulling, uh, the leg pulling back, and your front one, you're doing an opposite stabbing forward. Make sure that stomach is parallel, the belly button is pointing to the floor, not the mirror. And change. And left arm. Grab your foot again. Touch your knees together, square it. And right arm up. Stand up straight, really stretch it. Create nice long spine. Now kick back enough till you feel a stretch in your arm and then roll down kicking. Kicking with each inch that you go down, kick harder with your leg. 
and stretch your right arm forward as much as you can, chin up more. Chin has to be on top of that right shoulder, not below it. That means that you create a little more of a backward bend, go down, Tori. Go down more, kicking, kicking, kicking. Watch your progress with the foot above your head. The higher the toes above your head, the, the more successful you are in the posture. It gives you feedback right away. Kick harder, kick harder, Sachi. Okay. Okay. Second set. Okay. Grab that foot. Don't go to the heel. No, midfoot, Roxanne. A little more. That. And then use the foot itself. It's, it's, you get much more leverage through that. The foot is powerful. Now arm up and lengthen the spine first and then kick back. Feel the stretch. And as you go down, do more of a backward bending action with your upper body, Tori. Yeah, keep lifting the chin more and head more. And keep the hips parallel to the floor or the mirror. Don't let the hip rotate. It's all level. Now you're a bit the turnout. It's no ballet turnouts in the hip. And change. The other leg. Pick up the foot. Touch your knees together. And always be aware of your hips and your kicking hip, especially, to keep it parallel to the floor or the mirror. No rotation internally of that. Because that's what ballerinas do and they always get arthritis in their retirement. Yoginis do not because they maintain the proper alignment in their hips. Okay, kick back. And kick and roll. Point to toe, point to toe. And watch for the toe above your head. That's why those expensive mirrors are to give you feedback. Kick harder, kick harder. And connect the two shoulders. Have the same feeling. Have to go down more. Go down, go down, go down till the stomach is parallel. In the beginning, even chest can be parallel. But then ultimately, you will be able to raise the chest up more. Okay. You see, that got higher. Okay. Couple of breaths. And let's go to the stick. Bottom of the towel, arms overhead. Nice firm grip, index finger extended, wrists as close as you can get. Get the arms by your ears or slightly behind. Pull the rib cage up and the stomach in and look straight forward, concentrate on something. Actually, if, if you could, you could look about four feet ahead on the floor. Now step forward with the right leg and keep your eyes on whatever the object is you're focusing on and go. Lift the arms and lift the legs. The chest is going down, but the arms and the leg is always lifting. Leg up, leg up, chest down, chest down, leg up, chest down, leg up. I'm going to let go now. You're going to hold it. You're going to hold it. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, good. And left leg, step, lock those knees, both knees are solid. And lift the arms right now. Don't ever let the arms go down. They're lifting continuously. Now lift the leg, lift the leg, Jeff, lift the leg. See, that's it, a little more down with the arms, shoulders, and good. Hold it, breathing, stomach in, a little more down with the upper body. Oh, this one is a hunchback here. No hunchbacks. Take a picture. Okay. Second set. 
create a straight line and remember no hunchbacks keep lifting the arms and the leg and chin is of course 90 degrees go step forward to the right concentrate lift the arms now right now that's how you avoid the hunchback let's see how the rest of the class is doing keep going come down more Lift it from the shoulders, more arms up, elbows locked, straight line, come down, Sachi. Sachi, come down, Sachi, come down. That's it, good, hold it, hold it, okay. Left one, let's do it. Get it all straight. Straight line, and that's how you want to get it, get the chin up more. And step. And lock it, lock the knees, and start lifting your arms same time as you're, as you're lifting the leg. It's always 50-50. Lock your knee. With the, if the knee's not locked, you're just going to be shivering there. Keep the shoulders, and this hip has to come down parallel to the floor. And change. Okay. Did we do two? Yes. <laughs> All right. Step so that you don't step, don't step in into somebody. Big step to the right. Toes slightly pigeon-toed. Pull your, push your knees back, pull your stomach in, and hinge forward from the hips. When you're halfway down, slide the hands down the back of the legs, grab your heels or the sides of the feet, and wa work your arms, bend your elbows, and try and get the forehead on the floor, or top of the head for long spines like Sachi. Get the top of the head straight down. Pull more, more arm strength. Now is there, gee, nobody's having a really bad time. Yeah, work on the elbows. The elbows, try to get the elbows right down. No, get the elbows on the floor. And don't go, get, try to do it in, well, on the second set, we'll try to do that way. More straightforward in the front. Okay, come up. Okay. Couple of breaths. And second set. Four foot step to the right. Adjust the feet so the toes are slightly pigeon toed. Now keep your spine really long and come down very straight spine. Go down, that's it. And then bring your arms in front of you about six inches apart and try to put the elbows on the floor in front of you. Dry, let the head hang. That's it, that's it, that's what you do. When your elbows ultimately touch the floor, maybe not today, that's when you grab the heels then. But, by you, but, you, but you will be lengthening your spine. Let it hang. Don't tense your neck. Let the head hang. And little by little, each class you do, that to be, be pretty quick that it will be that your elbows will touch and then you grab the heels and do the rest of the thing according to the instruction. Okay, come up. Okay. Now that we have warmed up the hips, let's do the triangle, I guess. Uh, what? <laughs> Am I right or wrong? <laughs> Sometimes I go in outer space, so you have to remind me. Feet together, arms overhead, big step to the right. At least four feet minimum, long-legged people with your arms shoulder level. Now, this is very precise instructions, and I want everybody to pay really attention. Turn your right foot parallel to the mirror, and make sure the heels are in the same parallel line. Now, square your hips towards the mirror. You only turn the foot. You didn't affect the hips. The hips stay parallel. And then you push your hips forward. At the, from that parallel position, push the hips forward. Like that. And then very carefully bend your right knee 
and allow your left hip to rotate internally forward. Pull your shoulder back. Pull your left shoulder away from the left hip. Once your crotch is on the level of the knee, tilt the upper body, put the elbow against your knee, and fingertips between the toes. So, and look up at your left thumb, chin close to the left shoulder, and keep twisting the rib cage away from your left hip. Left hip is pointing down and forward. The rib cage is stretching up and back. Okay, everybody's getting it. And come up. Now, straighten the right foot to the front, left to the left. Now, again, square your hips towards the mirror. Don't do anything with the tips, hips other than square them straight. Push them forward. Pull the upper body back. And then bend your knee. And now you let your right hip rotate internally towards the mirror. That puts the bones in an advantageous position in the, in the hip joint. And not bothering later on because very often people injure their knees through incorrect positioning. Now tilt. Put the elbow, the fingertips down to the toes, and twist away from your right hip with the rib cage. Rib cage goes up and back, hip goes down and forward. Get in touch with the actual. This should go a little more like that, but not this. Yeah, this one too. And the knee should be more straight. The right foot is on the floor. Don't lift your little toe off the floor. And the knee locked. Okay. Arms down, feet together. Second set. Feet together, arms overhead. Big step, four feet at least. Arms shoulder level. Turn the right foot, line up the heels. Line up your hips. Push the hips forward. Upper body back. Sit down. Rotate that hip and pull the shoulder and chest away from your left hip. Sit down more till the crotch is on the level of the knee. Don't hang there up at halfway. And make sure your left foot is flat on the floor, little toes touching, left knee is locked, and tilt. Stretch from the shoulder more. If you feel your arm is not long enough to touch the toes, drop from the shoulder more. Really open up the shoulder, shoulder joint. Look up, turn the head sideways so that the chin is close to your shoulder because all the muscles, neck and chest muscles, should be participating. And change. Turn the right foot, turn the left. Again, work with the hips, level them. Push them forward and then sit down. Rotate the internal joint. The knee should be over your ankle. If it's over the toes, your feet are too close. So make sure you adjust. That's why we have the mirrors again. You sit down no more. And tilt. Don't lift the hip when you tilt. Good, see, now you're gonna be touching. Chin to the shoulder, good job. Okay. Come up. And together. A couple of breaths. Okay. Separate the leg forehead to the knee. Feet together. Arms overhead. Three foot step to the right. And turn to the right. Square your hips. Tuck your chin into your chest. Pull the abdomen in and curl and drop your head down too. 
round the spine from the very beginning, forehead on the knee, fingertips in front of the toes, arms straight. You wait until Long John to bend your head down. It just curve would start earlier and you would have no trouble touching your forehead. And inhale, come up. Turn, pivot around, square the hips, tuck your chin, tuck your chin in, pull the abdomen in, and start surrounding the spine as you go, now, go down. Touch the forehead, touch your fingertips, arms straight, and your right heel is stays on the floor, right, knee locked. Touch your forehead and keep it there. And change. Okay. I'm sound, feet together, and the three. Second set. No, second set, we still, oh gosh, that felt so long. <laughs> okay, arms overhead. Three foot step, turn, square your hips, and curl in. Tuck your chin into your chest, stomach in, and touch your fingertips, touch your forehead. Some of you are a little bit too wide. Three feet, that's all that's needed. Change. Look at your feet again, adjust them a little bit if you are too wide. Three feet, 36 inches, remember? It's all about precision. Okay. Square your hips, pull your abdomen in, tuck your chin in, and curl in. Inhale, and up. Okay. And now we're ready for the three right leg up. Rotate your ankle. Make sure you bring up the heel very high and anchor it there right on top of the thigh. Then push the knee down. Try to align it with your standing knee. Keep pushing it down and so it's straight down and then push it back more. And then put your hands to the chest and namaskar. Right hand, left hand. You, all you need to do is push your hips more forward, create a pressure on the ankle. As your knee goes back and the hip comes forward, it will anchor the heel in that position. Change. This is where concentration comes in very well, importantly. Okay, other leg. Rotate. Keep turning so the bottom of the foot points to the ceiling or to the front of the mirror. Be, be precise again, work on it. Push the knee back, in and back more so that it's a straight line, the, the knee isn't pointing out to the side, but pointing down. And one hand to the chest, and the other hand to the chest. Concentrate. Make sure your standing knee is locked. Whenever you find yourself on one leg in Bikram Yoga, that knee is made of a solid steel. No wiggling, jiggling. Keep working and pushing the knee a little more back, Sachi.
Okay. Ja. Dann läuft. Das wird ich zu wundern. Ab, turn the ankle. Good, that's good rotation. And go down. Now, don't sink into your heel. Press the toes and lift the hips up and the knee should be in line, both knees in line. Don't sag into your heel. It's all muscular strength. One hand to the chest and the other hand to the chest. Concentration. Don't let your eyes wander. Good, that was nice, such a good, good alignment. Okay, other big. Lift the heel up more so it's 90 degree perpendicular to the floor. And then you use the muscles in the legs and hips and don't sag into the heel. Press the toes into the floor and keep the hips parallel without sinking in. Okay. Oh, I guess if you learned your savasana, huh? Now there's a definite form to savasana. That is, arms by your sides. Adjust your shoulder blades so that they are closer to the, together. And make sure that the back of your arms from the shoulders are on the floor, palms up. Keep adjusting it. Neck flat, chin away from your chest. Legs completely relaxed, whichever way they will hang there. And breathe abdominally, diaphragmatically through your nose. And just mellow out. Because the payoff is happening now for all the things that you did in the previous hour. The payoff is happening in the cellular level. All the cells are being refreshed. All the areas that were tired and dry suddenly are oxygenated and in better way of supporting your body. Life happens on a cellular level and yoga is the master of reaching all the cells internally. And what we did before wasn't even yoga. It was preparation for yoga. Now we're doing yoga. Next one. Pavanmukhasana, wind removing. Bring your right knee up, interlace your fingers two inches below the knee, pull it straight down towards your shoulder. Your left calf muscle should be on the floor and try to bring the elbows towards the floor. 
Your shoulders should be level. Don't roll too much into your right side. Keep pulling with your left arm, left elbow. Maintain the same feeling in both shoulders and the back. Pressure in the lower abdomen. Breathe into any part that gives you any kind of discomfort. Use your, use your breath like a 911 call. The breath will release any tension that maybe it's sometimes in the bodies that have super tight areas and need a little extra help. You do it through your mind and your breath. First recognizing it and acknowledging it and then sending the breath internally to it. And don't forget to breathe through your nose because that's the only way that you could create a relaxation response. Mouth breathing is fight and flight when you're running from the tiger. But on your floor in Savasana, mouth is closed, nose is the only one active. Change. Lower your right, bring up the left. Pull the knee in maximum position. Now pull that right shoulder more down. Don't let everything happen on the left side only. The spine should be equally distributed on the floor, especially the right arm and the right shoulder and elbow. Work on the elbow. And change. Now bring both legs up. Wrap your arms around the knees. Grab the elbows. With the help of your elbows, pull the knees together. If it quite doesn't get together with the help of your arms only, use your hips too. Bring the knees together. Come, you know, hell or high water. Do whatever you have to do to bring everything together and close. And then press your tailbone into the floor. Neck is flat. Hold it. Don't forget to breathe. Again, through your nose. Only through your nose. And I'll exhale. Arms by your side into good savasana. Very often, people get a pinching a discomfort in the internal front hip area. When you bring the leg up, you get some discomfort. Well, I'll show you a way how to overcome that or prevent it even in the future. But as teachers, when someone complains that there's a pinching in that area, I'll show you how to do it. And then personally, I like to do that, enter it that way, that way to never have any kind of a problem in the future. So I'll, I'll show you before you do the second set. <laughs> okay? Now, you, normally you bring the leg like that, right? Well, I like the rotation like this, and then you pull it down. And when you do both legs, you do this, and bring the arms like this, okay? That is a simple prevention to prevent the tissue being pinched through the, uh, you know, inappropriate way. It doesn't happen to everyone, but it happens quite frequently. I know people with them, oh my God. I said, no, this posture can possibly hurt. And then I finally figured out what it was. <laughs> okay, second set. You can do the rotation, okay. Pull the knee in position. Make sure your left leg is absolutely straight with the calf on the floor. Shoulders are level. Elbows, work the elbows. Work on adjusting your upper back. Change. Left leg. Rotate it. 
pull that down. And the right leg on the floor. Change. Both legs. Hmm? When you come out, do you come out with that rotation? No, you don't have to, no. Coming out is, doesn't matter, doesn't affect it. Because here, once you have your pinching, you're squeezing things, and if they're not properly aligned, then the squeezing is where the problem comes. Keep the knees together. Work on bringing the knees together and press the tailbone in so that there's more an effect in your abdomen and the lower back, a better stretch. I always like to squeeze the best results from everything that I do. And change. Arms by your side, palms up. Adjust the shoulders again. Always be mindful of that because the kind of lives that we all spend sitting and hunched over looking at all the machines and we spend more hours in a very unhealthy way with the upper back. So when you're in Savasana, at least try to do the corrective action. Now the next one is the sit-up, and I'm very particular about that. Your arms are overhead. Hook your thumbs, palms flat. Now flex your feet, lock your knees, pull your abdomen in, take a deep breath on the sit-up. Exhale and grab the feet and pound the foreheads on your knees twice, bang, bang and turn around for the cobra. Now place your hands directly under the shoulders. Be precise about your hand position. The fingertips have to be directly in line with the tip of your shoulder. Chin is on the floor. Elbows are touching the rib cage. Feet are together. Feet are together and stay together. Now this is not a push-up with the arms. The strength from it comes from your buttocks and your legs. So you learn to squeeze your butt, your um, back of the leg muscles, and pressing that uh, belly button in the floor. The arms are just auxiliary. Take a breath and go up. Looking back, looking back. The ceiling or the back wall. Elbows stay close. Try to bring the chest up to the belly button. The belly button is pressing in the floor and your buttocks are strong like rocks. Good. Not bad. Okay. <clears throat> Arms by your side. Ear on the floor. And breathe. Observe the abdomen as it rises and falls. You breathe through your nose, but the abdomen, the diaphragm, is doing its job the right way. So that you get really deep, good relaxation. It's not a long relaxation, but it does a wonderful job on your body. Second set. Place your hands under the shoulders again. Make sure you bring the elbows in and they stay in. Feet are together. But just tight. Squeeze your glutes and take a breath and come up. Looking at the ceiling, squeezing the glutes and pressing the abdomen into the floor. The belly button into the floor. Keep getting the chest up. Chest up, chest up. 
It's a good modification. Yeah. Okay. Change. The other ear on the floor. Arms by your side. Again, abdominal, diaphragmatic breathing. And now, everybody's favorite, locust. <laughs> Just lift one side up and place your arm under it. Palms flat, bring both the other arm in there so that your little fingers touch and elbows are completely under your body, chin on the floor. Lock your right knee, point the toe and lift the leg up 45 degrees. Doesn't have to be all the way to the ceiling. 45 degrees, but be precise and straight and long muscular leg. Not just approximately, but exactly straight. Change. Left leg up. Point your toe. Don't roll the hip. The hip stays down on the forearm. You lift only the leg, John, not the hip. I don't want the hip up at all. I want the leg 45 degrees. You're overdoing it. Stay the, the hip stays on your forearm. Change. Mouth under. Double check those elbows. The palms are still under you. Breath on the exhalation. Up. Good. Ooh, strong back still. Perfect, Jeff. That's really, oh, take a picture of this. This is the best in the group. Mm. Good strength. Okay, change. Arms out, the other ear on the floor, and breathe. This is a very demanding posture on the back muscles your core, but once you get it, you have much more long-lasting body. Okay, let's do it again. That turned out so good. <laughs> get those elbows under. If they hurt a little bit, that's good. That means they're in the right place. And the right leg up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Left leg. Remember, only 45 degrees and the hip stays on the forearm. Left leg. change. And adjust the arms, make sure they're still in position, point the toes, lock the knees, and use your fingertips. Push up, then use your arms, your fingers, to get those legs all the way up, like Jeff is. Left, up, 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 up. Okay. Turn head sideways.
and be ready for the full locust. Uh, make some room for your arms. Feet together, arms out, chin on the floor. Again, use your glutes and feet together, knees locked. Take a breath and lift your chest and arms and feet all together. Balance on the belly, but the, the middle of the abdomen, everything else up in the air. Keep lifting the arms, the hands more up, the hands more up, the chest more up. Hey, you're doing good. You're doing better than I expected on this one. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you. <laughs> Remember to breathe and observe your abdomen moving. Second set. Arms out, feet together. Strong glutes. Ready? Get up and fly. Lift the arms, lift the chest, keep looking up, body follows the eyes. So first thing you do is look up and then go up. Everything you can get off the floor between the belly button. Arms up, chest up, legs up. And low, slow, 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 slow bending. Well, you did such a good job of showing the strength of your spine. Well, the next one will show you the flexibility of your spine. Okay, Bo. Bend your feet up. Grab midfoot again. Touch your knees together to start with. As you kick up, they will separate somewhat, but don't let them go wider than your shoulders. You have to pay attention if you have the view of the mirror. Take a deep breath. On the exhalation, look up and kick the heck out of those legs. Look up, look up, and kick up. Kick up till you're balancing on your belly button. Feet go higher. If you can see, you can take a quick grip in the mirror and look and, look and see how the toes are doing. The higher above your head, the better. Uh-huh, okay. That look good too. Let's do it again. That went so well. Grab your feet. Touch your knees together. Chin on the floor. And start up. Look up, look up, kick up. Kick harder, kick harder. Don't let the knees go so wide, Tori. Because then the hips are doing it, not the back. So maintain alignment. Change. Good. 
Remember to breathe low and slow. Always the abdominal. Now, do you know what a yoga aspirin is? That means you put your hands by your shoulders, you push the hips up and back, spread your knees apart, keep your heel, feet together. Keep your feet together and knees as wide as you can get. And then drop your hips on the heels and stretch your arms and chest forward all the way. Try to get the belly down more chest down more, stretch more forward, keep the hips down, keep the hips down. Now those of you who want to have your arms, uh, the tricep muscles stretched a little bit, put your hands back behind you, touch, put your palms together. That's a little stretch that's not very often available. In this one, you can do it. And I always hate to neglect any area from stretching. Okay, you can come up to the front and let's do the fixed firm. On your knees. Spread your heels wide enough so you can lower your hips between them, not on them. And then very slowly, carefully lower the upper body on the floor. Grab your feet, elbows first, then the chest, shoulders arms overhead. You can spread it more apart, Tori, if you have to. I know it's, mis I have more compassion now <laughs> since I've done weightlifting. <laughs> <coughs> arms overhead, <coughs> hold your elbows. And the knees optimally should be together. It's only when it's so miserable that you think they're gonna tear them in half. <laughs> Push up. <clears throat> Arms be your side. Feet together, toes up, arms overhead. Lock your knees, but point the toes toward your head. Tighten them, tighten the legs and thighs and abdomen. Inhale, and on the exhalation, sit up and grab your feet and pound the forehead on the knees. Double jerk, double exhalation. Second set. Knees together, spread the heels apart. You can roll the calves out a little bit if they're very fleshy and go back on your elbows and then exhale, drop the head. First put your hands on your feet, Tori. On your feet and then just see if you can get on your elbows. Good, okay, breathe. You can't get on your elbows? Just maybe a little bit, one at a time. Drop your head, let it hang. That'll be a little, a little incremental action. And push up.
Feet together, toes up, arms up. Inhale, sit up, grab your feet, double jerk, double exhalation. And half tortoise. Now, let's sit back on your heels, knees together, arms overhead. Sit up and stretch up as much as you can. Pull the abdomen in and stretch, keeping the hips on your heels, stretch forward as far as you can. Don't touch the head yet, touch the hands first. Then curl in and try to touch the head. Touch it, touch the floor, touch the floor. Don't lift your hips. The two things that have to happen is your hips have to stay and your forehead has to touch, ultimately. But do it in sequence. The first thing is always the hips and the heels. The way that you touch the floor, that's what you wanna, wanna hold it that way. Sometimes the last one isn't quite accessible yet. But make sure you maintain the previous part that you got. Like your hips and heels were touching, then you keep touching them, come hell or high water. Okay, come up. Try to come up the same way with the straight arms. And relax. Feet together, arms overhead, inhale, sit up. Second set. Sit back on your heels. The hips have to stay on your heels. Now stretch your arms up. And the first thing you do is get your arms down on the floor and then when you keep stretching more forward, if it's difficult to touch the forehead, stretch the arms more forward. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. And then ultimately, the final thing is touching the forehead. Stretch the arms more. When there's a struggle, stretch the arms. Okay, inhale. And relax. Feet together, arms overhead, inhale, sit up. On your knees, camel. Place your hands on the hips. Palms against the upper part of the buttocks and your elbows behind you. Push the hips forward and look at the back wall. Drop your head, drop your head and keep pushing the hips forward. Once you're as far back as you think you're gonna go, reach back with your arm and grab a heel. Thumb on the outside and the fingers on the inside. Nice, Jean, very nice. Keep the chest up. Try to reach back with one arm, Tori. One arm, just one, then the other, okay. Come up.
Feet together, toes up, sit up. On your knees again, six inches between knees, six between the toes. Hands on the hips, push them forward, look at the back wall. Little exhalations will fuel your endurance. Now reach back and grab one heel at a time. Continue using your hip strength to support you there. More forward, don't sink back too much in the arms. Keep the hips active. Keep breathing and hold it. Don't give up, don't give up. And come up. On your back. Feet together, toes up, and do a good sit-up. Double jerk, double exhalation. Rabbit. <coughs> sit back on your heels again. And now tuck your chin in. Put your hands on your heels. Chin tucked in. Pull stomach in. And aim the forehead for the knees as you lift the hips up. But now start pulling on the heels with all the power you've got. Remember, your body weight is in your arms, not your head, ever. So pull and just work. Walk the knees in. Don't try to walk the head in. Walk the knees in and pull harder on the heels again. Arms are straight. And change. Okay, feet together, arms up, sit up, stomach in. One more rabbit. Grab your heels, tuck your chin in, abdomen in. Now remember, your hips have to be perpendicular to the floor. So keep lifting. Walk the knees in more and lift the hips up. Lift the hips up. Try to close the gap by walking the knees in. Pulling, remember, arm strength. Okay. On your back. Feet together, toes up, sit up. And 
and now stretching. Bring the right leg out 45 degrees from the center and place your left heel against the crotch and the foot flat against the inner thigh. Then interlace your fingers and grab hold of your right foot. Fingers behind the midfoot, not the toes. Pull back on it. Pull the elbows to the floor and touch the forehead on the knee. Make sure your left knee stays on the floor. Change. Another leg. Position exactly again, 45 degrees from the center. And grab your foot, pull back on it, use the arm strength, bring elbows to the floor. Back of the leg is on the floor, pull up the kneecap. Forehead pressing into the knee. Sometimes it's about half an inch from the floor and if you use the forehead as a hammer to push down with it. Change. Both legs forward. Now wiggle your buttocks back when you sit up. Wiggle the hips back. Keep wiggling. Watch as it needs. One at a time. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, you keep going back and then work on your stomach coming down over your thighs and then pull hard on the feet and get the whole upper body lay down on your legs chin forward a little bit use your arms use your elbows and get that whole body flat on the legs huh? no more pull Did you wiggle your hips back? <laughs> now put your belly down. Yeah, put your chest down. Bend your elbows. Put it out, put it down. And then the last thing is put the face down. Now the face is the last thing that goes down. Work on getting the stomach and the chest down. Work the, on not just the toes, to use the whole foot if you need to. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I don't care, as long as you get more action in the center. Okay, sit up. Wiggle the hips a little bit back on that extended leg again. You know, get more flesh back. And then grab your foot. Forehead, elbows. And left knee stays down. Change. Press the forehead into the knee. Straighten out the leg. Ch 
change. That's it. Do a good sit up that will lengthen and wiggle your hips back. And keep pulling the chest and the stomach forward at the same time. You have to lengthen both come sides coming like a sandwich coming together. Well, I, you still have a little bit of a hunchback, not hunchback, but a hump there, Nick, and Nick. <laughs> Picking poor Nick isn't even here. Jeff. <laughs> yeah, get, get more of a, let me think. Okay, I think that's enough of that. Feet together, toes up, sit up. Spine twist, left knee on the floor in front of you. Cross it with your right heel so it's directly the outside of it and your left heel is touching your buttocks but you're not sitting on it. Then stretch up nice and tall and twist to the right till the left arm can grab the knee so that the fingers touch behind the knee a little bit and touching also the ankle a little bit. So the arm is straight, that's good, very good form. You need to work more on the, yes, good. Mm -hmm. Oh, chin. I don't like what's happening to your wrist. I prefer it more straight. Can you slip the hand right here? Try. And try to keep it more straight. Don't do this uh, very extreme contraction to contraction. Okay, other leg. Put your right knee on the floor, cross it with the left. Now stretch the chest up, make yourself tall. And then twist to the left. Put the elbow against the knee and put the hand behind the knee. That will straighten out the wrist. Make sure your wrist isn't all jammed. Grab the inner thigh with your left hand. Grab the inner right thigh. Okay, change.
Feet together. Arms over hand and inhale, sit up. And let's finish with cleaning house. Blowing. Sit back on your heels, pull the ribcage up, sit up nice and straight and place your hands on your knees. Then you're going to blow out through your mouth, like blowing out a candle, each and every time pulling in your abdomen. So the breath originates from the pumping of the abdomen. Okay, ready? <laughs> Okay, let's stop a moment. Moist your mouth, swallow. Do a second set, a little faster. Okay. Okay, I think you got it. Thank you. Now, take a few minutes of really integrating all those circuits in your body. Because in the cellular level, you've been disassembled and reassembled in a new and hopefully better model. So arms by your side, adjust your savasana posture, make sure that your shoulders are level, your shoulder blades are flat, your back of your arms is on the floor, palms are up. And now breathe through your nose and abdominally and honor different parts of your body. Start by relaxing your forehead. Breathe into the body part I mentioned. Breathe into the forehead. Relax at the frontalis muscle. Relax your eyebrows, your eyelids, and your eyes. Your hard-working eyes. Honor them. Allow the back of the head to sink into the floor and relax your neck. Breathe into the knees, uh, these shoulders and the arms. With each breath, allowing the body relax more deeply, more completely, just surrendering to gravity. Flatten yourself into the floor. Breathe into your rib cage. Feel your vital organs completely at ease and relaxed. Relax your abdomen. Allow your body belly button, just go to the back of your body. Breathe into your hips, your buttocks, your thighs. They worked hard to support you in your standing poses. Breathe into your knees, your calves, your ankles and your feet. So from the top of your head to the bottoms of your feet, you're completely at ease. And with each breath, feeling more relaxed and more at peace. Just you and your breath. <laughs> 